Hi guys, today we're going to go check out installing Active Directory domain services onto a new server inside our environment and be able to connect that to our existing Active Directory environment. So let's get straight into it with a whiteboard demo and then an actual demonstration of how to do this on Windows Server 2022. So let's just jump straight here into the whiteboard. Let's start off with what is Active Directory? Directory, or at least in the context of on-site. Um, Active Directory is an authentication service, and the way that Active Directory functions is you have these things called Active Directory domains. Now, an Active Directory domain might be something like contoso.com. And this is an authentication space. So inside this domain, what we're going to have is we're going to have individual objects. So we might have, for example, users. Like we might have Bob, we might have Tracy, these individual people. And these people like Bob and Tracy are actually going to have user accounts that exist inside this identity space. We might also actually have devices. So we might have servers and we might have computers these computers might be, for example, laptops or desktops inside the environment. And these things are also going to be part of this authentication space as well. There is a concept called Active Directory joining. And by joining a server or joining a computer to an Active Directory domain, they are going to end up with an account inside Active Directory here. And we also then have control of them within this spatial context. What we can do at this point then is we can take people like Bob over here and Bob can come along and can log into a computer with his account or Tracy can log into a computer with her account as long as they have permission to do that. Now this is kind of the logical diagram here but what's actually running this inside let's just get rid of some of this for the moment. Technically all that a domain actually is in this context is a big database. It's actually a database that's called ntds.dit it's actually a flat file database. So technically it's a really big text file. It's a technology that goes back a number of years, it goes back all the way through the Unix days, all the way back towards mainframes. But to actually run this thing, we have a specialist selection of computers that are actually called domain controllers or DCs. Each of these domain controllers actually hold a copy of this specialized database, this database that actually contains all the accounts and all the details for how Active Directory works and functions. So let's just take Bob over here, move him across. Say if Bob actually wants to go and log in and authenticate to a computer that he wants to use, well, for that to actually work, one of these domain controllers actually has to respond to that request. Bob has to essentially pass his username and password to the computer, and the computer can go and check that against the domain controller and against the database, whether Bob's username and password is correct, and he also has the authentication ability to go and log into that machine. So this database here is very, very critical. It means that if any of these domain controllers go down, or if all of your domain controllers do go down, you're going to be in a very big world of hurt because everything is going to break. So what we have is we have what's known as a multi-master system. And in this case, it means that on a simplistic level, each of these domain controllers talk to each other and they all make a copy of that database between each other. Meaning that if a record or if a user, for example, like Bob, gets updated in any one of these databases, that data is then going to be replicated to each of the other databases in the environment. So that if one of these computers should go down, it doesn't matter, we've still got some that are actually still running with that same database. So what we're going to do today is we're actually going to create a new computer over here. In fact, we're going to have Windows Server installed onto a machine, and then we're going to make that server into a domain controller and actually connect it into an existing environment that's already got domain controllers on there because we want at least three, probably even more in large companies, domain controllers across the infrastructure to make sure that we're protecting ourselves from server failure here. So let's get straight into the demo and have a look at installing Active Directory domain services 
onto an existing server in our environment and converting it to a domain controller. So we're over here on a computer. This is just a standard Windows server. We can see if we go and run server manager on here, there's nothing actually running on this at the moment. On this local server, we have just got it called SEA ADM1. Uh, it's connected already to an existing domain called Contoso, but it is not actually a domain controller yet. If I go and look at ADDS here, on server manager on this computer i can see there is a domain controller running but it's running on a different server it's called dc1 what i want to do is i want to actually install um, the active directory information onto this computer i can do this in a number of different ways but what i'm going to do is i'm going to go and pick up uh, windows powershell here and we're going to actually install this via powershell the command is very simple we're just going to do install windows feature name ad domain services and we're going to make sure that it's installing on this computer sea svr1 that's it that's going to make not well sorry this is not going to make this a domain controller just yet but what this is going to do is it's going to install the features we need for it to become a domain controller so once this is actually installed, we still have to actually go and configure the options to connect it into the infrastructure. OK, we can now see that this is actually completed on its installation and I should have the Active Directory domain services available and ready to actually configure. So let's go and just run another command here just to check that's definitely installed. If we do get Windows feature, uh, computer name SE, oh, I need to change that command around. When playing with PowerShell, make sure you've got your dashes in place. Just to have a look at all of the stuff that's installed on here, if we scroll up, we should be able to see, uh, here we go, Active Directory Domain Services with an X against it. That's nicely installed for us. That's great. So what we want to do now is we want to actually go in and go and start to work with SEA SVR1 and get this thing configured so it's going to become an ADDS um, um, an Active Directory Domain Controller. So if I go back into my server manager, you'll notice up here I have a little notification. If I click on this notification, I need to do some post deployment configuration for my domain controller. It says here, promote this server to a domain controller. Now, some of you guys may have done this process before back on older computers, and you may have done this through an old option called DC Promo. If you actually do DC Promo here, uh, DC Promo does actually still exist for uh, automating this process, but ever since Windows Server 2016, DC Promo was retired from actually promoting a domain controller, and we have to use this wizard instead. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add this domain controller to an existing domain. We're going to add it to contoso.com down here. Um, we're going to use the existing credentials, so we're going to use the administrator. Administrator. I will need the administrator account of the domain to be able to add this in. Let's click next on that one. Now there are a few options down here that we might need. Now most of these options you can select as default, but just to point these out, this for example domain name server. We don't need this to be a domain name server if we've already got domain name servers or DNS servers inside our environment. So I can actually untick that one. Um, if you don't have DNS servers or you want more DNS servers for redundancy, you can leave that connected as well. That's fine. Global catalog servers. The difference with the global catalog server is if you have lots of domain controllers inside multiple different forests, global catalog servers know where they all are. But when you start getting into very, very large environments, and you might have offices in London, offices in New York, offices in Paris, what you might find is that replicating the Active Directory database between all of those offices becomes rather inefficient. So there's a concept of a global catalog server, which means that in each of those offices, New York, London, or Paris, the global catalog server knows where everything else is and can redirect it. So in New York, for example, you're mostly going to be authenticating to the New York servers. But say, for example, you did need to actually make an authentication to a server in France, in Paris, then what would happen is the global catalog server would have information about the stuff in Paris and it could actually redirect that information. Not everything needs to be a global catalog server, but I'm going to leave it ticked in this place. The read-only domain controller is very important. In a multi-master environment, a domain controller itself can both read and write all of the records on its database. The read-only domain controller was a feature that was brought in in Windows Server 2008 R2, 
and the feature was supposed to be for servers that are put into a physically insecure location. Maybe it would be actually on site, maybe it would actually be in, for example, a retail location where somebody could pick up and walk out with that server. We would also heavily encrypt that with things like BitLocker. So we don't need to do this on a normal day-to-day -day basis. The directory services restore my password is very, very important and you shouldn't lose this one. This allows us to actually do restores from tapes and restores from backups. Um, and should probably be set at the same password for your other domain controllers as well. If we want to actually replicate an existing copy of the database, we could install it from media, but we'd need to drop that out of an existing domain controller. Um, I'm just going to leave this to replicate from any domain controller. It's going to pick the most efficient one possible. These database locations are 99% of the time don't need to be changed. These are the locations where the database for Active Directory is going to be stored. Only switch these if you absolutely need to. Uh, for most scenarios, you can leave those as defaults. This is actually going to create underneath here a PowerShell script that's going to send into the system. So you can actually take that PowerShell script and use this for future installations if you want to. But that's all that this wizard has done. It's just basically built a PowerShell script for me. So I'm going to click Next and I'm going to click Install here. And I'm going to wait for this to actually promote itself to a domain controller. It might take a few minutes to do. A few moments later. Okay, this server is now successfully configured as a domain controller. I can close this down. And what I can also do today is I can go and have a look at tools and I can go and look at Active Directory users and computers. So this is actually going to essentially show me the contents of that database across my machines. And what I can see down here is if I go into domain controllers, I now have SEA DC1 and SEA SVR1 that have actually become domain controllers inside my environment. I don't need to subselect either of these. My computers are just going to use the, the most available one at the time. And both of these are actually currently set as global catalogs as well. So what has actually happened is we have taken an existing server, made it into a domain controller or installed the software, promoted it and added it to an existing domain ready for use. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial for how to actually convert a server into a domain controller. And you'll join me next time for some more quick tutorials on Windows Server 2022. And you know the routine, hashtag like and subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this video and will join me next time. Goodbye.